Hi guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, for what the freezer bags taught me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do and for what you're already doing. Speak to me, speak through me. You know we're all dealing with different circumstances, different challenges, different joys, different pains. But you know how to meet us all at the same place in what in one place at the same time. Do so, Lord. Teach us. Make us, mold us into the people that you would desire us to be. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, so I've got a kind of a crazy story to tell you. Um, it's a practical story. Um, okay, so I'm not the... I'm not um, a crazy Amazon shopper or online shopper in general. And usually when I shop online, it's basically uh, for the same things, for groceries. And even when I do go to places like Amazon, it's very routine. Now, I never buy freezer bags. But what uh, what I mean when I say freezer bags, like there are like these large Ziploc bags that you could put food in the freezer with. Um, I I first heard about them when when my sister um brought cake over and she put the cake in freezer bags. So that's when I first saw them about a few years ago. Um, uh, so, so she put the cake in them and stored them in the freezer. They're like big, big Ziploc bags. And, um, so, so I don't usually buy things that I don't need because I'm on a limited budget. So I don't usually buy. I can't afford to buy frivolous things. I do treat myself um, once in a while, and I have like little fun things like Netflix and Amazon Prime. But because of my budget, I don't really um, buy frivolous things that I don't I don't know I'll need. Um, but the other day. One of the ladies that works with me, where I live, wanted to put away something. And she said, do you have bags to fit it? Now, the only bags that I had were these little, little Ziploc bags, um, which are not good for holding much. She said, um, she said, uh... The only the only bags you have are these little bags, and I said, okay. So she found something else to store whatever she had stored. So I went on Amazon, and for no reason, I didn't hear a voice. I didn't. I didn't hear anything, but. I decided to buy some bigger uh, freezer bags, you know, to store stuff, you know. So I ordered them. They came along with some other stuff. Uh, so I figured, so I, so I, I told another person to put them away, not thinking that. I would ever need those things. Ergo, on Friday night, I like to uh, 
I I like take out food for the weekend because it's just the weekend and it's my way of celebrating. And and two for one pizza had a deal. Uh, you get two pizzas for one price. So I figured, oh, but um, because I live. Because of the way I live, um, I don't need two pizzas, but the price is so good that I'm going to get it. So basically, when I order pizza, it lasts me for the whole weekend. But with two pizzas, I'm like, what am I going to do with this extra pizza? And then I saw a a picture in my mind of these freezer bags. And then I remembered, oh, I could just put them in the freezer. So that's what I did with them. I just put them in the freezer. I, I didn't know that I would need them. I just, I just bought them because um, the lady said I didn't have bags big enough to store that thing. And the Lord said, I want you to talk about what the freezer bags taught me. Uh, It taught me to listen to the Holy Spirit. Although I may think what he's telling me to do is strange and I may not understand, he knows the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, Because sometimes as human beings, we want things worked out, we want things settled, we want things that we can understand. But the Lord is moving to a place where he needs um, people to uh, hone into his voice and listen to it. And even if it sounds insane, if he tells it to you consistently and consistently, it's probably God. Now, be warned Not everything you think and feel is God, but um, usually when he when he tells you something consistently and he says it again and again and again, he means it. Uh, In school, I learned about a biblical law called the law of first mention. Meaning, when the Lord says something more than once in the scriptures, he wants to emphasize it. Um, So, basically, when the Lord brings up a principle, and he brings it up again, and he brings it up again, he wants to emphasize it. And so, sometimes uh, with me, that's what he does. Sometimes I can feel he says something, and then he says it again, and then I hear it on a message or something. Um, so that means he really wants me to do it. What is the Lord telling you to do today that he's been telling you over and over again, but you've been too afraid to do it? He's saying, do it and I will be with you. And he totally wants you to understand that these instructions that he will give you will not be instructions that you're used to. 
these instructions that he will give you will not be instructions that you're used to. And that's why I, I keep saying you need to get in your rhythm with God. You need to know how he speaks to you because how he speaks to me is not how he's going to speak to you. You, um, you have a unique rhythm with God that he's going to use to speak to you and you're going to know that it is you're going to know that it is God you won't always know but you'll get into a rhythm where you'll have the sense that yes he's telling me to do something and Sometimes it won't be a voice. Sometimes it won't be a uh, a thing, but sometimes it will be an inclination. Because I know sometimes with me, um, he, I, I will just be on the computer and whatever, and he, he'll stop me on a website. And my eye will just keep going to that particular thing. And that's what happened with the freezer bags. I was on Amazon buying other things. And I just started typing freezer bags. And I I didn't know why because I don't use freezer bags. I usually use... um. Um, uh, plastic containers, uh, Tupperware to store my stuff in the freezer. I don't usually use freezer bags, but for some reason I felt to type in freezer bags, and I could have just uh, put them on my my waiting list and whatever my wish list, but there's something in, in the God inside me said to buy them. And I think because my eye kept going into it because he wouldn't he wouldn't let me just put them on my wish list. Like some something inside of me just wouldn't let it go because I I think I put it on my wish list first, but something inside me just wouldn't let it go. It just wouldn't let it go. And so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll buy them. I don't know why, well, why I need these. And that was like only about a week ago. And look, because he knew about the pizza, he knew about the uh, two for one deal. He knew that I I would go and get it because he knew he knows my routines. And you know, you know, sometimes it's hard um, to define what whether something is God or whether it's you or whatever, but. I found in my personal experience, when he repeats things over and over, and you have a a, a gut feeling that this is just, this thing won't let me go, that is... a god uttered transmission where where god is uttering something to you that he wants you to pay attention to whether people call it intuition um 
it's like the, that knowing that something is wrong, that knowing that a relationship is wrong, that knowing that this business deal, everything seems right about it, but something in my gut is not feeling right. And follow that gut feeling. Because it's a God uttered transmission. He's trying to transmit to you that something is not right or something is right to, to go ahead. You keep praying and praying about a situation, but you, you can use prayer as a stall tactic. And he says, don't use prayer as a stall tactic. Use it when you really don't know what to do. Use it when you want to share with the Lord, but don't use it as a stall tactic. Oh, I'm praying about, about this, this relationship or this deal or whatever. You're not praying about it. You're stalling. And he's saying, don't stall. Move. He's saying, don't stall, move. Or to some of you, he's saying, don't move, stay, slow down, assess. You know what he's telling you to do, just do it. Whether it's to slow down, do your research on that business partner before you get into business with them or whether you're dating that guy or that girl and you're saying she seems perfect she's awesome she's hot but something about her is not right or he seems fine or whatever and I'm going to th 30 I'm going to 40 why not but something inside you was saying, no, listen to that thing. Listen to that thing. I didn't know why the Lord was, was uh, telling me to type in freezer bags. But he knew. He knew exactly because we see through a glass darkly, but God sees it all. And sometimes he will give us pictures of what he sees so that we are aware. We have to listen to our God uttered transmission because he's transmitting from his his know it all his his omniscient spirit to our human spirit what we should do and we're saying we we're praying about it we're not praying about it we're stalling because we don't want to do what he has told us to do stop using prayer as a as a stall tactic use it as a resource um use it as a way to talk to the lord and communicate with the lord use it as a way to ask for healing, ask for what you need, ask for your wants, ask for, you know, to share things. Don't use it to stall. Oh, I'm praying about it. You don't need to pray about that. You know what your God under transmission is saying. So whatever it's saying, follow it. It doesn't matter what the world is doing, what your friends seem to do because if you don't follow it, it's going to lead you into trouble. And if you, you get in trouble, it's easier to be warned and stay out of trouble than to go against your gut and, and uh, end up in a mess. There's been several times where I've gone against my gut and ended up in a mess. 
there's been several times where I didn't slow down where I should have, and I ended up in a mess. Um, there's a time when I wanted to start a, a uh, movie company, but I, I felt the inclination to slow down and whatever, to slow down and do my research and all that stuff. That's what my gut was saying. But I didn't do that. And I ended up in a world of hurt because of this. So I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. And it and it took me years to get out of it. Because I didn't follow my gut. And... There's been a lot of times where I follow my gut, and it's paid off. It's paid off. Because a lot of people, um, God has given us tools already that, um, God has given us tools already to that we can live this life. And it's not about doing what you want to do versus what God wants you to do. Now, I believe that God has given you his transmission system so that he has a communication system that can communicate spirit to spirit. I believe it, it's, it's your gut's communication with God to say don't go in there don't get get into that relationship or do go for it you know it can sometimes your gut trumps reasoning and sometimes uh, it, it doesn't so how can you tell that your gut is is God and not you? Well, sometimes it's hard, but generally I find if the message repeats and repeats and repeats, then it's you. No, then it's God. Um, what, and another better way to, to, to get that information is, is to, uh, get in real relationship with God. And once you get into real relationship with God, I'm not talking about just the Sunday morning, uh, daily uh, one scripture Bible reading because it's routine. I'm talking about a real relationship with God where he can hone your spiritual senses, where he can teach you how he speaks to you. And let me, let me give you something. Um, all of those books that you're reading about hearing God and all of those tools that you're listening to about hearing God and knowing his voice, all those tools are great. Those tools work for those people and they may work for you. But what God really wants is you. He wants to show you how he speaks to you. And you, uh, I am not greater than you because I went to Bible college. God doesn't care about that. I just went to Bible college to study. Like that doesn't make me um, more adept at hearing God. Anybody could hear God. But you just need to hone in and discover how he speaks to you and how he speaks to you 
is not going to be how he speaks to you, how he speaks to another person. Because you are a unique individual. And, and he will speak to you uniquely according to how he wants to speak to you. So I can give you tools like I just did, like um, if he says if he says it once, it could be him. If it if he says it twice, it probably is or whatever. But that may not work for you. That may not work for you. That that's something to try, but that may not work for you. But what will work for you is getting into relationship with him, understanding um, how to hear his how to hear his voice in re, in regards to your life and what he's planned for your life. Uh, and the more closer you get to him is the is the better you'll get about uh, discerning his voice from your own, discerning his voice from the devil's, discerning, you'll, you'll get, you won't ever be perfect at it. You won't ever get it right all the time, but you will be able to discern better what is his voice, what is your voice, what is fear's voice? What is the devil's voice? You'll 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 get a better understanding of what that is, and you'll get a better understanding of how you can draw closer with God, depending on your lifestyle and how what He wants to do and what's in your life and who's in your life. For those of you married folk, he he may use your spouse to talk to you. Because he knows that you will listen to your spouse. For those of you with best friends, he may use your best friends to talk to you. Or he may use music or some other art form or um, he, he may use hockey, he may use sport, he may use wrestling, tennis, anything like that, because God will use anything to talk to you, anything to get his benches across, because he loves you that much, and he wants you to know that he will use anything because he loves you that much. And he wants you to know that you're loved and that you are significant. And he wants you to know that you are worth talking to. You are worth his time. He created you to be a beautiful masterpiece. And it doesn't matter what they said about you. It doesn't matter if they said, oh my gosh, you are good for nothing. You are good for everything that God has planned for you. You are good for everything. You are good for everything. You have everything you need to be used by God. You have everything you need your own. You're, you're his work in progress. You are his work in process. Your life is a process. And he understands that. He understands what you're going through. And he will use everything you're going through right now uh, to, to glorify him. You know, she had a Lord, we bless you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we magnify you. God, we praise you. You are not a mistake. Whoever told you you were a mistake because uh, 
your mother wanted to have an abortion with you, that's just wrong. They were wrong. They were wrong. They should not have said that to you. You're so special and so valued and so loved. And he wants to know, he want, God wants you to know that you are worth his time. You are worth him speaking to. to. You are worth him taking that time out for you. And he wants that time with you. And he wants to love on you like crazy. And he also wants you to know that you can trust him. You can trust him. And he, he, he's willing to take your relationship with him at your pace and he will and he will teach you uh your his pace for your life because god has a specific pace for for every person not every pace is the same for every person and that's why comparison is deadly because that person's pace is not the same as your pace. God has a specific uh, pace and a specific plan for your life. And the only way to get into that um, plan and pace for your life is to get into real relationship with him and understand that you are not a mistake, you are not an accident. You are divinely crafted and ordained to be here. It doesn't matter if your parents were married, it doesn't matter if you were conceived in the back of a Sheppy, it doesn't even matter if you were conceived through an affair. Let me, let me say that again. It doesn't matter if you were conceived through an affair. It doesn't matter if you were conceived through an affair. You're still not an accident. You're still divinely, you're still divinely ordained by God. This is very strange, but I'm sensing that there might be someone who it, who is pregnant through an affair right now. And all I have to say in the most loving way is that baby that you're carrying is ordained by God. That that child that your womb is incubating right now is divinely ordained to be here by God. The world may say all kinds of things, but that child is meant to be here. It, it doesn't matter what your relationship is with the father, it doesn't matter. And He will help you. He will bring the resources to help you nurture that child, to help you grow that child, to help you raise him or her in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you that he forgives you. He forgives you and will extend the hand of forgiveness if you just ask. And for those of you who have had abortions and think that it's done for you, it is not done for you. There is forgiveness and restoration. And that little child is in the arms of heaven right now and he's holding the
And he doesn't condemn you. He wants to receive you into into the arms of love. On the wings of love, up and above the clouds, the only way to fly is on the wings of love. On the wings of love, only the, only the two of us together fly high, fly high, up on the wings of love. In my arms of love, up and above the clouds, the only way. To fly is in my arms of love. In my arms of love, only the two of us together fly in high, in my arms of love. In my arms of love. Up and above the clouds, the only way to fly is it is in my arms of love. In my arms of love, only the two of us together fly in love. He wants you. To, he wants you to know that he's ready to wrap you if you just ask. And if if you're scared, that's okay. Just take one step, and God will take two. He he knows how much you messed up your life. And he's ready to receive you and ready to forgive you. You don't even have to know anything. Just just give it a chance. You've given everything else a chance. You've given sex a chance. You've given men a chance. You've given women a chance. Perhaps both a chance. Now he wants you to give him a chance. And I'm telling you from experience, you won't regret it. A relationship with the Lord is the best thing ever. And all you have to do is just call out to him. You don't need any specific fancy words. You just need to tell him where you are. You need to just Pour out your heart. Pour out your spirit to to him. Tell him exactly what you're feeling. If you're not sure about this, tell him, I'm not sure about this. If you feel stupid, you can tell him, I feel stupid with this. Like, but the lady said that you can heal and restore. So if you can do that for me, that would be great. Even, Even that prayer would be awesome. And a relationship with the Lord will absolutely change your life. You will have struggles. You will have pain. But the difference is you'll have somebody to sit in in with you with the pain. The Lord doesn't sit above judging you. He comes down with you. He sits in the muck and mire with you and helps you with it. He doesn't just leave you. He's very personal. He's so close. And he says um, today through a Mary Mary song. Mary Mary is uh, a gospel group. And they had a song years and years ago, which I love. It says, he's so close. He can hear you breathe. He's so near, he can wipe your tears. 
Mend your heart. He knows it's been broken. Standing with his arms wide open. For so long he's been waiting. Every day anticipating. For you to realize that he's so close to you. He's so close, he can hear you breathing. He's so near, he can wipe your tears. Mend your heart, he knows it's been broken. Standing with his arms wide open for so long. He's been waiting every day, anticipating for you to realize that he's so close to you. He's so close, he can hear you breathing. He's so near, he can wipe your tears. Mend your heart, he knows it's been broken. Standing with his arms wide open for so long, he's been waiting every day, anticipating for you to realize that he is so close to you. He's so close, he can hear you breathing. He's so near, he can wipe your tears. Mend your heart, he knows it's been broken. Standing with his arms wide open for so long. He's been waiting every day, anticipating for you to realize that he's so close. He is. He's so close, he can hear you breathing. He's so near, he can wipe your tears. Mend your heart, he knows it's broken. Standing with his arms wide open. For so long, he's been waiting. Every day anticipating for you to realize that he's so close to you. See you next week, guys. Take care.